of the things that you point out in your writings is that this language was never a written language, and written languages developed for different purposes, for practical purposes, political purposes, not necessarily as closely grounded in the sacred as, as the non-written. Yes, um, and one of the reasons that they did that, at least uh, I was told early on, was because oral tradition um, allows that language to continue to grow as the people are growing in consciousness. So the pronunciation actually um, ignites a resonance in, in the psyche of that individual speaking it or hearing it. And it does something with developing higher consciousness. Yeah. And when you've lived as, as you have in a culture which has been stable for so long and uh, not involved in industrial society, you have, I think, a different sense of the purpose of life itself, the reason for being and the nature of existence. Well, it, it gives the feeling that um, a sense of, of a deep sense of eternity, like as if um, the, the outer changes that are taking place are taking place there's an inner, very deep, profound level that is continually there, perpetuating uh, whatever is occurring in the outer peripheries of daily life. Mm -hmm. That's what I found so mm -hmm. beautiful in your writings and in all of your work. It comes through very, very strongly, this sense of, of eternity, that, that you realize that in the face of eternity, this lifespan of ours is, is just a blink of an eye. Well, I've noticed that um, more so now after I've gotten more into the ancient mysteries of my father's people, that even the way they walk, the way they sit and walk, uh, you can almost feel the resonance of a very old people, a very ancient uh, level of, of being that's right within the way they, they live, the way they, they move, and, mm -hmm. and then their dances and, and how they do them and, and, and worship that way. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I was particularly impressed when, when you talked about your grandmother and how even in cleaning the house <laughs> and sweeping the floor, every movement was a, a way of reminding you of, of the, your connection with the, the world of spirit or the world of eternity. Yes, you see, because they related everything to sound. So um, when she was sweeping um, the floor, for instance, there was that sound of the boom, um, and I'll just make it uh, for you here, is that sound. Well, that sound um, can take you into trance state by just repeating it over and over. And that's the sound that that they used to teach us was for the purposes of getting into the foundation of life. Apparently, um, consciousness does have a foundation and or floor, if you will, the basis for everything, the floor plan. And that sound could take you in so that even um, as she was sweeping, she was reminding us that that's, that's even sweeping the floor was, was a meditation. And of course, the dust, uh, um, was was she used to joke with us and say that was to entrap you into it <laughs> so, so that you can become stronger in your beliefs and mm -hmm. foundation mm -hmm. so you've worked much of your adult life with vibration that's right and and with mm -hmm. sound and and i gather that much of this is is original to you through your own visionary experience it, but much, much of it came through the teachings of, of the Ute people as in the Pueblo peoples that were imparted to you. Yes, a lot of it came right out of, out of the teachings. Um, doing the Ute Sundance, for instance, um, was, very, uh, Im was a very important time for me because it allowed me to um, uh, grow in, in very beautiful, significant ways in developing my visionary capacities. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the Pueblo people doing the animal dances, because the animal dances are really um, uh, ways by which the, the people um, dance the, um, the vibrations of being, you see. Each, every, all the in, in, an animal dances, the Indian uh, that, that they dance, and the plant dances are connected to forms that create the significance of cosmic consciousness, you see. Mm -hmm. 
so I, it was developing since I was about eight years old, and, and it just continued mm -hmm. on until such time as I began to follow those uh, forms mm -hmm. consciously. Now you've mentioned the sun dance, and many of our viewers may not be familiar with that. I, I understand there has been some controversy around it. I wonder if, if you could tell us for you what the sun dance is. Um, the sun dance, I think, is the way by which, um, at least for me, I learn how enlightenment works. Enlightenment, I believe, comes like in a flash of light, at least that's the way I understand it. It's like a, a flash, which I call a circle of light. And out of that flash, out of that circle of light, certain information or wisdom is translated into conscious thought. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I learned about the Sundance mm -hmm. and, and what it is. Um. Can you describe a little bit about the, the actual dance itself? Uh, there's a pole. We, we do the Sundance Dream Quest in which we dance back and forth to this pole that has uh, a Y at the very top. And we dance back and forth to it um, over a period of three days, three to four days with no food or water. And as, and as we dance um, it's the second or third day, we reach very deep spiritual levels mm -hmm. in which we um, we go uh, into the into the dream uh, the uh, the dream because uh, we you know this is a dream we're living in the dream state mm -hmm. and and so we go into this perceptual reality yeah. I, I in fact I thought it was fascinating that you posed the the question in, uh, in one of your books that is often come to my mind it's a question I don't think many people ask but it, the question is are we real that's right one of the questions that I asked early on was are we real and um, the question that I mean the answer came uh, and doing my ceremonies is that we're not real actually we're like a strobe light that comes on goes off comes on comes on but it, it's happening so fast that we we don't realize that it's happening mm -hmm. uh, when we cease to exist in any single moment that we do, at that moment we return back to the infinite and then return again. And it is the light that helps us to keep that consciousness and that continuity. But otherwise, we're, we're total uh, clarity, which is the color of the dark, the, you know, of dark light, but it's so pure that it's clear. It, it it's hard for me to totally grasp the meaning of, of all of your words, but my sense is that what you're saying is that we're like projections on a movie screen. Exactly. Coming from another, yes. not even another dimension, coming from eternity itself. Yes, from eternity itself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it's, it's uh, in the Tiwa culture, we call it na mene. Na mene means soil or earth. And na means the self, me means goodness that is in a, in a place of movement. Goodness and movement are synonymous. And so you have there the movement that creates us to exist as projections from the base, which is the planet, in this case the planet Earth, you see, mm -hmm. the soil. Because the soil is not really uh, soil, it's, it's infused with consciousness, you see. So, so therefore the land for us is... is is very precious because it's it's our mother. It's um, in fact in Tiwa we say kiata mene, which means mother father, and kia means placement that is purifying, and ta mene means seed that is in a state of movement. Mm -hmm. And those two combinations is what makes the basis for consciousness. Yeah. That the mother provides the place. Uh, in the spring when we used to go out and, um, and, and plant the fields, the, the land that we were tilting and that we were cultivating, and I'd follow the plow and, and drop the seeds. Well, the land is the mother that is purifying the seed once it is embedded there, and the seed is the father, and that movement is the awareness or the germination that is occurring with the seed and 
Tiwa translates that as a way of talking about higher consciousness. Yeah.